We're going to be talking to Will Omani today about his new play, Minneapolis. Um, so, Will, how did the play start? Where did it begin? Minneapolis uh, began... Well, I'd, 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 you're online and you see people losing their lives in a way <laughs> uh, through stupid things that they say or tweet yeah. or comment on. Um, and about that time, I think John Ronson's book was coming out. Uh, so I kind of read that. And yeah, I guess I just got really interested in the relationship between the person who gets shamed mm. and the person who shamed them. And so I think I've like written it as like an unlike an almost kind of love story between these two people. Make no mistake, there's no romance there whatsoever. Yeah. Um, but it's looking at whether uh, t- two people who sit on uh, who, who whose relationship has kind of been founded on destruction, mm. basically, can actually find any sort of connection. Yeah, great. And so, I presume some of it takes place in a kind of digital, in a digital sense, or are we talking about kind of uh, the real world as I well? I mean, it's it's set here and now. Mm. Um, the internet is the fourth character in the play mm-hmm. that we never see. It's really yeah. important to me that we never see. So, if anyone's expecting kind of <laughs> live tweets, kind of like across the back wall, that's probably not going to happen. And was that a Warning decision? To directors. <laughs> was that something you made early on? That kind I think of it was. The I challenge think, of the digital on yeah, stage? Yeah, so it's about a, a, the guy who gets shamed, you know, retreats into this kind of bunker, looking to wait out his, uh, you know, to do his penance, mm. uh, so to speak, and wait it out, wait for the storm to pass. And so, um, yeah, we're, it's set in this kind of isolated, it's a soundproof, Kind of an attempted soundproof room. The 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 guy or the boy is a musician. We never learn his name. Uh, he was part of a band and he was a drummer. So there's foam on the walls and uh, you know egg cartons on the walls and he never ventures outside. It's just Deliveroo, day after day after day. <laughs> um, and he's got a drum kit and they're the kind of elements that bring the world um, to life. And so when you start a work, what What's the first part of it that comes to you? Is it images? Is it, is it text? Is it dialogue? Uh, I think it's dialogue. Yeah. So the first scene is set on a street and uh, it's 8 a.m. and a guy is talking to a girl and he's doing everything he can to get a video that features him saying something pretty bloody bad. <laughs> um, taken off social media before the whole thing's in his in his own words kind of blows Mm. uh and he's ultimately unsuccessful and that's kind of the prologue of the play um uh i forgot the question i'm sorry (laughs) Sorry. um and then that's the kind of so it yeah i i I usually respond to characters who are talking to me yeah in this case it's a it's a it it was a man fumbling doing everything he's scrambling to try and get 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 Make it work. the woman to yeah remove this great. thing, this very incriminating thing off her social media. And do you feel like what you've been you know interested in has shifted over the course of the process, or have you stayed kind of within the centre of that, I, that uh, idea? Uh, no, it's shifted. It, it, I usually write plays kind of I like to say in the dark, and then <laughs> I don't know how they're going to end mm. um, when I begin them. So uh, what began as more of a um, let's say kind of love story and I use that very selectively <laughs> uh, plenty of parentheses and italics um, has kind of shifted into something um, I think grander than that so just you know you were just saying to us that it's it's a love story of sorts but with a kind of big a big set of parentheses yeah it, it's a it's a it, it's more that it kind of takes the boy meets girl formula and just inver- turns it on its head yeah so um, uh, the play was kind of began and had a, a number of drafts before the Me Too movement and the Weinstein kind of thing hit in, I think it was September last year, it was mm. about six months ago. Um, so the play, I think, has taken on an even greater uh, resonance mm. um, because of what's kind of 
going on right yeah. now as well. And so the stakes are even higher, I think. Yeah. Well, a world of consequence now, or ho maybe, hopefully. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, interesting. Um, and so tell us about the play festival process so far for you. Uh, you've been... Yeah, you so this is probably, it's like, this play's third development. And I hope final development, <laughs> you know. There's <laughs> only so much you can... Um, but so the, the past week, um, I've been in a room with Susie D and Christy Evangelista and uh, Maine Wyatt and Hua Shonde and Taylor Ferguson. And, um, you know, we've been going through this thing uh, with a very fine tooth and comb. Uh, and it's, yeah, I, I guess the main emphasis on the work has been, uh, at least over the past week, is really um, making the, the, the girl at the centre of the play. And I only use the word girl because n none of the characters really have names. Mm. Um, so it's girl and boy and Rue, who is <laughs> the Deliveroo driver. Oh, yeah, right. Like, we just <laughs> never learn names in the play. Um, it's really just making sure that uh, she has great agency in the play and, yeah. you know, strong and, re you know, like, firm but fair. And great. Yeah, I think that's where the play was kind of just a bit wobbly before. Um, and, yeah, I think that we've moved the play ahead in leaps and bounds. Great. And so what, what's the most exciting or, or the, you know, what's the thing that's exciting you about the work at the moment? Yeah, well, probably the thrill of and the the kind of the joy of watching a very flawed character. Just he's a disaster of a character. <laughs> like he could have got things right in that first scene, and he doesn't. Yeah. And then every decision he makes from there on in, with the exception of a few, is just him digging a deeper and deeper <laughs> hole. He just doesn't know how to operate in this new world yeah. with these new standards and we're laughing at him because yeah we're enjoying the disaster that is yeah. him yeah. Um, that said I think by the end of the play there's a glimmer of education that happens like I think he begins to learn it just takes nine tenths of the play for him to yeah. get to a point where he is beginning to understand yeah. and even then he's yeah, still got decisions to make. Probably is a whole nother play to get him through. So, the next, yeah. so I think I'm excited by that because I don't think I've quite, um, I don't think I've ever written a, a, a bold comic character like that before okay. and I would like to think it's not, we're not laughing because I'm trivialising what he's doing but because it's criticising mm. what's going on. Yeah, fantastic. 